Hello and welcome to the Literary Bar. Today at the bar, it's all about iridescence. Because the light that shines through the brilliance of my amazing guest today cannot be deemed by any sort of disability. So I'll not focus on that. But I will tell you for the purpose of clarity that Precious and Oyiko Sola are legally blind and Favor is deaf. These beautiful young women are students and during this holiday they are residents at Dreamland, at Dreamland Foundation. More than anything, they want to live in an inclusive society, not in a prescribed box of disability. So at the Literary Bar today, we want to give them a platform for creative expression. Today with me, I have Victoria, my special sign language teacher, and Mufe will be giving us the Nigerian national anthem after the break. In Nigeria, we use the American Sign Language, ASL, to communicate in the deaf community. Thomas Hopkins Galloday in 1817 set up the first American school for deaf and incorporated signs from different cultures. However, an American missionary, Thomas Foster, is credited with introducing ASL to Nigeria and Africa. Now we're going to invite Mofe to give us the national anthem. Mofe, the beautiful Mofe. The national anthem. Nigeria, we hail thee, our own dear native land. The tribes and tongues may differ, in brotherhood we stand. Nigeria is all our proud to say, our sovereign motherland. Our flag shall be a symbol, the truth and justice reign. In peace our battle are not, and this we count as gain. To harm to our children, a banner without stain. O God of all creation, grant this our request. Help us to build a nation where no man is oppressed and so with peace and plenty Nigeria may be blessed so I'm applauding when you want to clap for a deaf person you do this to get their attention so I just want all of you to raise up your hands for Mofe. Mofe, how are you? I know a bit of sign language, but I'm going to leave it to Victoria to continue. I've finished all I know. So Victoria, can you tell Mofe that, uh, that we are so proud of her? Hmm? Thank you. And uh, we enjoyed the anthem that she gave. Okay, and then we hope she'll come back again. So can she tell us something, anything about herself so that you can tell us back again? My name is Eimofe Awotumbo. The name of my school is Wesley School 1 for the hearing impaired. I want to be a computerist in future. A computer Computerist. Sign. A computerist. Okay, so Mufe is already a tech girl and um, we are looking forward to your inventions, okay?
Thank you. Thank you. And um, so after the break, we will join the extremely talented girls from Dreamland Foundation. They are blind, but their light is not dimmed at all. Do join us after the break. Welcome back. I have with me my very lovely guest. But before then, let me give you a backstory into the education for the blind and visually impaired. Louise Braille was born in 1809 and at the age of three, a horrible accident in his father's workshop cost him his sight. He went on to invent a tactile system of reading and writing for the blind and visually impaired in 1824. He was just 15 then. This system is called Braille and is still in use to this day. Of course, technology has improved accessibility to education with apps and audiobooks for the people who are blind. Oyinka Sola is going to take us in Anuriki, but before she comes on to give us that, I want to tell you something that happened recently. Southwestern states in Nigeria marked Ishashe Day on August 20th. It's a day dedicated to celebrating traditional religious beliefs and practices. Ishesha just means heritage or tradition. The day is set aside to honor and promote indigenous Yoruba spirituality, which includes the worship and veneration of Orisha. Ishesha Day serves as an important reminder of the rich cultural heritage of Yoruba people. A lot of people have taken umbrage with the recognition of this day because our indigenous religious worship is now deemed demonic and all adherents are hell-bound. But God is beyond all of these petty squabbles. If there's any true religion, it is love. So to honor God, Oyinka Sola will give us an original oriki done by her dedicated to God Almighty. Before she comes on, I want to acknowledge Oluomo Diekola Ismail Adifowokwe, DIA, for sponsoring the Oriki Iwo competition in Oshun State. Congratulations to the winner. When we come back after the break, Oyinka Sola will perform her Oriki right here. Do join us after the break. Iba Iba sheda onru o moju baba ba to da mi saye iba re ni mo se oba mi to te re kari aye o oba mi re re osun dani dani muni muni fen fe fen fe kabiti kabiti oba la na oba lo ni oba ni titi aye raye Iba re ni mo she Mo du pe riri je Mo du pe riri no Mo du pe riri lo Mo du pe fun abore lo ri awon mo Nigeria Taba ni ka du pe ore ti wa Olorun se fun wa lati gba ta ti bi wa Titi da koko yi a o le ka to Mo wa da ladura wi pe ki Olorun ki o bukun Nigeria fun wa First of all I just want to say well done, Oyinka, for that beautiful rendition of her Uriki titled Iba. If you were just joining us, you missed a lot. Oyinka Sola's rendition was simply amazing. I told you that these girls are so brilliant, that their star is shining so bright. And disability is not an issue. If you thought that was amazing, I told you Precious wanted to become a journalist. So she's gone out and brought a particular tale, a cautionary tale to young people like herself. So I'm just going to let Precious, and for the first time on Literary Bar, we have our own correspondent. So let me hand it over to our correspondent, Precious. Please tell us what's happening. Headline news. Poor female student acting as girlfriend for 15,000 Naira. Now, the news in details. A 21 year old female student of the Quara College of Health Education Technology, 
Mojisola Awesu, who was contracted by her friend to act as a girlfriend for another private varsity student at a party for the sum of 15,000 naira, has been found dead at a refuse dump in Aleniboro area of Ilori, Kwara State Capital. Now, the news in recap. Kwara female student acts as girlfriend for 15,000 naira. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Amazing. I mean, they have it all. And nothing, nothing should stand in between Precious and her desire to become a journalist. If you wonder how she's been reading this news, I want her to tell you the materials she's been able... She has a book that I can't read, by the way. And this is the first time I'm seeing a book, I cannot read it. But there's something special about this book. We told you about Louis Braille. So I'm going to let Precious tell you just a little bit about the material that is enabling her to read what you and I cannot read. And we, we sabi bukabi. So tell us, how, how, how are you able to do this? As visually impaired, we make use of different materials, such as marble, which is this, then the stylus, which we use to write on it. Okay. We also have the writers to enable us to type what those that can see will be able to read. But since I just want to read my own news now, knowing that I'll read it alone, I made use of my marble and stylus. Wow. Well, well done. Well done. Okay, Oyinka, we're not leaving you out because I know that you are a talented musician. And um, that Uriki you did was just so powerful. And I know that you did that on that a sh very short, short time. So what's your inspiration for your music? Um, actually, <coughs> I don't know how to sing before until I got blind. And now I'm learning keyboard and sax to improve my singing. And I would like to be a great musician in the future and actress. Okay, an actress, yes. And she gets her inspiration for her rikis from Nollywood movies, right? Yes. Especially the Yoruba ones. Yes. Now, before I let you ladies go, I want to ask you, I want you to say something to people who always imagine that being blind means you are incapable. What do you want them to know or to do better by you? When I got blind... I actually thought all How hope old were was you when lost. you got blind? Um, let me see. It's nine. You're eight, nine. Were you, was it um, a sickness? Is it something you're comfortable talking about? No, I just woke up and noticed that the eyes was, the sight was beginning to, you know, go little by little. Wow. But then, um, you, you, your parents expose you to education, yes, and then here you are. So that education, it is, is something that is um, available to people, just that parents should know. And where did you start your education that uh, facilitated this? Pacheli School for the Blind. Pacheli School for the Blind. And now you are in secondary school? Yes, ma. Okay, and both of you are in the same school? Yes. But you are coming out from a particular place today. Where is that? Dreamland Foundation for the Disabled. Okay, so what do you do at Dreamland as well? Um, we have a lot of things doing there. Okay. Aside the fact that we are residents, mm -hmm. we have the opportunity to learn a lot of things, such as instruments like keyboard, saxophone, and also we have the opportunity to learn computer, which they don't give us opportunity to do. In school, in secondary school. Why? Because they think you're not. Um, yeah, they think we can't do it. Maybe because the sight is not there, they just feel like oh, they are blind, so they shouldn't do anything. So what you're asking for now is that people should include you in life activities and adventures. Yes. And not just treat you like oh, they are yeah, they are yeah, blind, so they just feel pity for them. Yeah. No, you're not. You're actually not begging for an opportunity. You are insisting that as a Nigerian, 
all opportunities available to every Nigerian child should be made available to you, right? Yes. So you can hear them. They want to be included in life as a Nigerian child. So please, ladies, gentlemen, government, let your policies be such that these children, even though they are deprived of their sight for whatever reason that may have happened, sickness, accident, or just, they insist that they should be included in all activities. By the way, they cook. So next time you girls come here, you're bringing food, right? You are yes. bringing food for me. And I know at Dreamland, you people learn cooking as well. Yes. Hairdressing, yes. shoemaking, tailoring. Fashion. So I'm going to ask um, somebody who knows a little bit more about Dreamland after the break. Mr. Joshua Olakule is going to join us after the break to tell us more about Dreamland Foundation. Welcome back to the Literary Bar. And I hope you have been entertained and you have also been learning while you were watching. You've met my young ladies that were here, uh, Precious, Mofe, and Oyinko Sola. And you're wondering, these girls are blind and they are deaf. But how did they become so amazing? They're amazing because they have the support of very dedicated teachers and support staff. These children are residents at the Dreamland Foundation. And I have with me the founder of that foundation, Olakunle Joshua. And he'll tell us more about the foundation and the work he's doing. So, welcome, Joshua. How Thank are you? you? I'm fine. I'm good. And you? I'm well. I'm safe. I'm fine. <laughs> because I've learned from Mofe, so I'm fine. I can say. <laughs> sure, I'm getting it. Yes, I'm fine. yes, that's fine. Good. Yeah. Good. So, I mean, I know that people ask you a lot of questions about your work, but I want to get straight to it. How did you get into this work? And how are you coping with this? Uh, children by the way it's not only girls that are at dreamland they are boys and girls as well so how did you how do you work how do you do this yeah actually this um comes with passion first of all um you can't get into this because you are looking for money mm -hmm. fame you get tired and you just leave everything and go uh this uh, is a long story actually if mm -hmm. i should start um mm -hmm. It started when um, I was temporarily blind for almost two months and then uh, then I wanted to study medicine before I had passion for mm -hmm. I changed my course of studies because when I saw I was so I was uh, curious about how people with uh, disabilities how, how did you get blind for two months after um, a very serious accident Okay, so, so we were just three that survived from, uh, in the accident. So, wow. And then, you, you know, after some time, you know, the sickness, I, was, I couldn't use my eyes. It was mm -hmm. so difficult. The kind of clothes, the color of clothes that we wear, what was even in my place to eat mm -hmm. and all the likes, you know. I got curious about how they survive, how they cope. And I was like, uh -uh. I only had it in the Bible about blind Bartimaeus. Mm -hmm. Are there people blind like that? So I got curious and I changed my course of studies to special education. Mm -hmm. So during my course of studies, I saw the possibility of what the uh, people with uh, blindness and then um, the hearing impaired children, what they could do. Then it changed my um, mentality from, you know, sympathy and uh, pity, then to, you know, empathy. And I got passion to, to you know, uh, empower children so, so and people with disabilities. So let's say that your tragedy led you to your purpose yeah, in life. Led and me to you my are purpose. pursuing this purpose with passion. With passion. Okay. I know for, for a fact that some of the children who stay with you, that you are actually the one taking care of them. Mm -hmm. The society places a lot of stigma on families that have children living with disability. Mm -hmm. If I'd even go further... Religion has also happened where people mm. will say, oh, it's not my portion mm. or it's my... It's unclean. It's unclean mm. and, and things like that. But 
you are a very clean looking gentleman mm. handsome thank sir. You. so thank you it has not in any way affected you mm -hmm. negatively mm -hmm. so what do you say to parents that have children living with um any form of disability i know you're doing this beyond blindness deafness you're also mm. in the autism intellectual, spectrum intellectual challenge children. Inter intellectually challenged mm. children and all that so first of all how do you take a child who was born blind or who blindness happened along the way like precious at age eight how, how do you get them to become this amazing uh first of all let me start from where you said um you know people in the society still believe um, is unclean and all the likes i even had a friend that uh, you know after studying special education the mother mm -hmm. insisted that no 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 you're not going to practice that Mm -hmm. I don't want you to give birth to a blind child or yes. a deaf child. Even many people have woke up to me. I hope you are strong enough. Mm -hmm. say, no, it's not contagious. Yeah. So, and uh, with uh, the people that we admit into Dreamland Foundation for the Disabled, we, uh, it depends on their needs. Mm -hmm. We really want to solve uh, problems in our society, not to just establish a foundation. When they come like that, we see if they are really in need of our service. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, an orphan that uh, does not have anybody to take care of. So we look for sc uh, scholarship and all the likes. Uh, intellectual challenge children as well that have been, you know, let me use the word condemned, you know, from schools or from the society that uh, the, the, uh, the parents uh, does not have a hope, uh, no mm -hmm. hope to, you know, to uh, give hope to the child, you know. When they come, we assess them, what can they do? That is why in Dreamland Foundation for the Disabled, we have academic, we, we have intervention through academic and vo different vocations. We have uh, shoemaking, we have fashion designing, we have uh, makeup, we have uh, uh, hairdressing. Yeah, I know we, Mufay, Mufay is, a, yeah, is a makeup artist. Yes. Like uh, the girl that signed National Anthem Mufay yeah. that you talk about now, uh, she's a good makeup artist. At, at the age of 13, Amazing. she can make... We are not... Actually, we are not telling her to go and establish and be working. Mm -hmm. she, she is very brilliant. Uh, she was the best student in Wesley School for the Hearing Impaired. Uh, the last session, Wonderful. she just graduated. Wonderful. She just graduated. She's mm -hmm. moving to secondary school now. And with that, she has many skills. She can make hair, mm -hmm. can plate hair very smoothly, and then make And, and you teach them cooking. So, I mean, the point is that you're mm -hmm. teaching them life skills life skill. like uh, oyinko and um, precious said mm. in their schools they are not mm. they are not included mm -hmm. in things that other children are doing mm. and i get that you know maybe teachers are scared that or oh, maybe they can get hurt yeah. and all. but how can a child get hurt from using computer learning how to use yeah, computer it, it's still the or being in the press yeah. club it's yes. still this, it's still this um, lack of a uh, adequate awareness in the society. Okay. Many people are still not. Uh, I was on a show on this, uh, one of the shows of this uh, uh, TV, you know, we talk about why people are not, uh, why do they have, why are they not giving people with disabilities opportunity in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. one, of, one, of, one of the reasons is ignorance. You, you cannot believe that uh, even at this dispensation, people will still walk up to our organization and ask us, uh, you know, I met this week, mm -hmm. I met a child of uh, 15 years mm -hmm. that working and still asking, uh, you know, he has not been in school. He has not been doing anything. Just there at all because of ignorance. The same thing affected the teachers. Okay. Affected people that are taking care of them. Br briefly before, before we round up, um, I know they have a particular passion, Swing High. And that is yeah. a um, nursery school for children that are born mm. with um, any of these challenges mm. because I know that sometimes parents hide these children mm. for years and they, when they're exposed to formal education they are almost a bit advanced mm. and that has its own challenge. Yeah, uh, because of the, um, we think about inclusive. Yes. As Lagos State has kickstarted the inclusive mm -hmm. in 2003 yeah. and we still need in a, a, uh, a lot of things needs, needs, still need to be done that is mm -hmm. why we thought about a an exciting preschool for the young blind children okay. we want to start from so it's, the it's blind. Swing, swing high only for blind only for the blind children because okay. uh, deaf children are being given opportunity more than the blind okay with what we have seen 
right. you will see deaf children attending school at the age of three, four, five. There okay. are many inclusive schools okay. over there okay. here. Then even intellectual challenge children. Mm -hmm. It's just that at that point, they might not be able to um, assess what is the challenge. For example, they may just say, oh, it's too restless. But for the young blind children, it's, they, they don't have opportunity to go to school. So we have them, they will come in, we train them, we let them to be independent, walk around on their home, be able to jump and all the likes. Then we can now include them into the mm. mainstream schools. They'll be able to go to any schools without, with little or no assistance. Okay. That's, I mean... Like I said, it's amazing the work you do, and um, I will not overemphasize the fact that we can see the work that you're doing. We're seeing the dividends. You mean these children are just amazing. And um, if we don't come together as a society to support children living with any kind of disability, it's going to be our loss. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw some of the things that they are doing, and that is just a tip of the iceberg when it comes to their ability mm -hmm. so i want i want to i want you to advise parents and people alike you know if you have a child that is blind per se how do they go about after they get over the shock yeah um actually uh the first step that uh, the parents take in nigeria is to look for a uh, spiritual solution actually it's good mm -hmm. it's good to do that God did. but i want to really appeal to our parents out there that as they are looking for that spiritual mm -hmm. solution they should give these children opportunity yeah they should give the children opportunity i was talking to a parent the last time that okay this uh, uh, the parent brought a child without an eyeball at all wow. the eyeball did not develop what is that called um it can be called it can be called anything that is congenital Right. So right. that is. Uh, I think that's a, a that, whole that other came, show. Yeah, that's another <laughs> story for another. <laughs> that's a whole other uh, show for another day. That so, so you no, know, don't let this child to stay in church and be praying. Bring them out. They have potential. Okay. And for deaf children, I just want to put it out there. You know me. I've been trying to learn how to sign. How to sign. You know. So I'm learning. Mm. I'm learning how to sign. How to sign. To mm. sign mm. slowly. Mm. So I will, I'm a perpetual student, so that's <laughs> not a problem. But I just want to, you to let parents know that if you have a child who has um, a hearing impairment, it's important for the whole family mm. to learn how to sign. Mm. I know of a family where they have a 30-year-old girl today. She never went to school. Mm. And so the, the parents just use basic uh, mouth, woo, 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 woo. Mm. To, to talk to her and I think it's a lost opportunity for the whole family to mm. adequately communicate mm -hmm. with this uh, girl. We have schools like Wesley mm. and then your foundation mm. where you actually give training to the community mm. so that they can incorporate these children and people. Mm. Because one thing I know about disability is that it can happen at any time. Mm -hmm. at anybody can lose yeah. their sight. Mm. It happened to you. Yeah. Thank God you recovered. Mm. So I just uh, want you to Keep up the work that you're doing. And I praise the fact that for you, it's all about opportunity. Mm. And how do you sustain these children going by? Because you said it's not about money. But I know mm. that we need money. Even the way they look, mm. it's money. So wh how do you get your support? Yeah, and we, we are here and there, you know, writing proposals, talking to people. When I see you the first, if you are, if you are with me for five minutes, you don't need to ask me what I do. I will find a way to tell you what I do. So, so I will talk about, uh, among five sentences, Dreamland Foundation would have, should, uh, would have come, maybe the third sentence. So we talk to people to come, and we don't really say, send money to us. Mm -hmm. For example, she, uh, one of our beneficiaries says, uh, two of them are going back to school. Yeah. So if you want to pay their, for their school fees, you don't need to send to our account. Send to the school, to the school. and monitor the, their progress okay. so people trust us this way and we okay. tell you this is what your money is being used for yeah. so we talk to and, people and even that. in your home you need people to sponsor children's stay yes. because some parents cannot pay Afford, yeah. so thank you for the opportunity that you're giving all these uh, children mm. I want us to give Oyika Sala opportunity to sing another song that is 
originally has. Let's experience her talents. It's just for the meantime. It will be fine. It's just for the meantime. It will be okay. It's just for the meantime. It will be fine. It's just for the meantime. It will be okay. Koso unto lelo niyo. Tiko ni pada robo dola. It's just for the meantime. It will be okay. Wow, it's just mm -hmm. for the meantime. I know again how we're all suffering in Nigeria. And so from Oyinka's mouth to God's ears and to all of us, it's just for the meantime, everything will be okay. Thank you so much, Joshua. Thank you. Thank Oyinka you for Sola, And us. thank you to all my amazing guests today. And for you viewers at home, I just want to thank you for spending this time with us. Remember that the literary bar is always open on your social media platforms. For more, please follow us on Facebook, X, and Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Make your life a great story. My name is Chinidu. Thank you so much. See you next time.